Today we are heading back into the woods and searching for mushrooms. And we're checking out spots we've never been to before. Really hoping we could find the edible kinds and ooh, I've been waiting all year for this. Woohoo, let's do this. Just before we go mushroom hunting, I want to thank our sponsor, North Spore. North Spore is all about empowering people to grow and harvest their own edible mushrooms. They have spray and grow kits, which are ideal for beginners and hobbyists. They make fun Christmas gifts. I've grown their lion's mane, golden oyster mushrooms, and blue oyster mushrooms at home. All edible and delicious. North Spore also has fruiting blocks for varying skill levels. Recently, I grew their shiitake. I'll share the step-by-step -step process later in this video. Afterwards, Mamio cooks them. North Spore also offers mono tubs, mushroom grow tents, liquid cultures, tinctures, and a complete line of sterile substrates for growing whatever species of mushroom you'd like. To grow mushrooms with North Spore, click the link in the description box and use my code MISSMINA to get 10% off your order. And now, off to the woods! Hello darlings! Greetings from an undisclosed location. We're gonna be looking for golden chanterelles here. I heard there is some around here, but we had a very short mushroom season in this area. You know, we had an extended summer, and then about two weeks ago, we had consistent rain. And then the first uh, frost of fall soon after came in, so let's see what we could find. These woods are filled with Douglas fir and western hemlock. They're the type of trees that chanterelles love to grow near. Please keep in mind, I am not a mushroom expert, but I am a hardcore enthusiast. Remember, just because it looks like a mushroom does not mean it's safe to eat. To learn more about identifying species, please refer to mushroom guidebooks. What is oh, it? It's so weird. It's like... That's a mushroom, yeah? Today, I am joined by two people. I don't think you'll see them on camera, but it's my sister-in-love and her boyfriend, so I'm not here alone. And Mamio is a snug as a bug in her bed. <laughs> the trick is finding the chanterelle under all these autumn leaves. Doink. These mushrooms grew straight off the pine cone. All right, my sister in love keeps finding mushrooms on pine cones. I spy small white blobs. Could they be a very young lion's mane? So far, we're only seeing uh, very small mushrooms. Oh, a bebe shelf mushroom. So very teeny. We were scanning in that area, but it turns out right next to the small shelf mushroom, there's a bunch of uh, bigger mushrooms. These are like medium sized. I'm gonna try to grab one of these. Ooh, it's like a little greenish. It's a yellow green. It smells mushroomy. It smells edible, but I'm not sure what this one is, so we're not gonna eat this. All right, this is the biggest shelf mushroom we've seen today. We have some twin mushrooms. They're stuck together. Nice. This looks to be young turkey tail. I find it challenging to identify species when they're in the earlier stages. Some people identify mushrooms by taking a sample and studying them with a microscope. This video clip doesn't capture the details well, but the underside of these mushrooms have lots of tiny holes. These youngins look fresh and plump. Mature turkey tail mushrooms resemble, well, turkey tails. I right across there is a trunk with a small shelf mushrooms. Looks like we found some inky caps. When inky caps get old, they dissolve into dark goo. Right behind them, looks like they're the baby inky caps. Another type of inky cap is shaggy mane. I've seen these in the backyard before. And with age, they also disintegrate into that black ooze. So drippy looking. So this log seems to be growing coral mushroom. Baby size. They look like hairs, right? Little hairs. In comparison to my pinky. See how small that is? Here's a look at more matured coral mushrooms. These polypore mushrooms look like burnt food. Nonetheless, they're beautiful and glossy with a pinch of spooky. If we want to talk about spooky fungi, there's the octopus stinkhorn mushroom, also known as devil's fingers, and the bridal veil mushroom. What a stunner. Just found another old shelf mushroom. I 
think these might be, are these blackberry bushes? Take it a little slow. Don't want to trip. Ow, the thorns. Ooh, ow, ow, hey. Ooh, there's a, some kind of hole. Not sure what animal lives there or lived there. But we're just passing by. All that effort to show you this. It's big. Just look at my hand next to it. Vines are hugging this one. Thus, the mushroom now grows into the shape of a flower. And right above it, there is another one. Oh, that one, the bottom is graying out. Quite big. <laughs> it's bigger than my face. <laughs> this looks to be a shelf mushroom. It must have fell from one of the trees up there. Maybe got peeled off. I'm gonna head back home for now. But I'm gonna pick up the smaller ones to craft with. I'm gonna dry them out. Oh, the gills are cute. Look at that. Ooh. This looks to be lion's mane, but past its prime. I'm thinking lion's mane because of the strands. In the right conditions, they can grow majestically long. Next to the lion's mane, looks like new stuff is popping up. Hmm, perhaps more lion's mane. Hey, slug! On a scale from one to unicorn, how does it taste? While we're on the way back to the car, we find a bunch of mushrooms. Uh, that one, it's either a turkey tail or false turkey tail. Uh, I need to get a closer look. And then next door, there's another species of mushroom. Some of the caps are still round, while others have flattened out. Flattened caps are a sign that they're releasing spores. Looks like a beard. So much moss on these thin branches. And then there's like little dew drops stuck on there. We're setting up the tiny mushrooms to dry. Within a few hours, they dried up quite a bit. The next day, we hunt for mushrooms once more. Yesterday, when we went mushroom foraging, it was like uh, 10 a.m. Right now, it's 3 p.m. And this time, we are uh, at a friend's property. The property owner found this mushroom two days ago. And today, we are joined by my sweetheart and his fluffy son. We have a little bit of witch's butter popping out. Here's what witch's butter looks like when bigger. Resembles ruffled fabric. And next to the witch's butter, that looks to be turkey tail. First time seeing them growing right next to each other. Soon after, we join forces with my sweetheart's friend and his kids. Look at this teeny tiny one. It's smaller than my uh, pinky fingernail. <laughs> They're cute, aren't yeah, they? I like mushrooms like that. I like feeling the inside of it. Would you like to see under it? Yes. I wonder There's gills. All right, we found another one. Mushrooms, I know you're under there. We're gonna need x-ray vision to see through these many fallen leaves. Aha, inky cap, we meet again. Their pinstriped caps and brown tips tell me they must be Tulosisus impatiens. Those teeny white specks are bebe mushrooms. Curious to know what they grow into. I'm gonna put it in my pocket like this. Oh, yeah, those babies are so cute. What are you gonna do with all that moss? Probably set it up by the pond. That looks very It'll good. grow. Hi. Look at this guy's paws. So dirty. <laughs> it's time to go home. <laughs> I love rain. I love mushrooms. But uh, getting pretty wet out here. It's time to get cozy, get in pajamas. Hope you enjoyed the woodsy scenery and the encounters with cute little mushrooms. In previous years, we had an abundance of mushrooms. They just popped out all over the neighborhood. As we eagerly wait for next autumn, that prime time for fungi around here, I'm growing mushrooms at home. And now I'm gonna do a walkthrough of the shiitake fruiting blocks from North Spore. Different mushroom species have different ideal growing conditions. Before opening the bags, you gotta make sure the blocks are mostly or completely brown. And I do see quite a bit of brown here. If you do not see mushrooms in the bag, but it is uh, mostly brown, put the block in the fridge for at least 48 hours. 
with the bag still unopened. Then remove it from the fridge and remove the block from the bag. Soak your block in cold water for about 4 hours, then put it in a tent or chamber. These instructions are on North Spore's website. If you see mushrooms starting to grow inside the bag, it's okay to begin the fruiting process, which means it's ready to come out of the bag. Once they're ready, you could put the blocks in a fruiting chamber. You can also use a mono tub or humidity tent, or you could take a trash bag or loose fitting plastic bag and put plenty of half inch holes. Why do you need so many holes? Mushrooms exhale CO2 and inhale oxygen. They can suffocate if there isn't adequate airflow. If the shiitake mushrooms look odd or have unusually fat stems, it's usually because they need more air. But also don't grow your shiitake block out in the open, as it will dry them out. I'm putting my blocks in a tent. We have furry friends in this household that might get all up in the mushrooms, so the tent is a protector. If no mushrooms are on your block yet, spray the outside of it at least once a day until you see some pinning, the baby mushrooms popping out. And if you do see mushrooms, check on them a couple times a day to make sure they have adequate humidity. There are different strains of shiitake. The type we're growing is called Lentinula edodes. In the booklet, it says humidity for fruit body is 85 to 95% and the temperature is mid-range, 55 to 70 degrees Fahrenheit. If humidity levels get low, then generously spray the block and the sides of the humidity tent or the container you're growing them in. Heads up, some cautions and considerations. If you're sensitive to spores, you might consider putting the fruiting mushroom kits outdoors or in a well-ventilated area. Whatever kinds of mushrooms I'm growing, I do not put it in my bedroom or office, or any room I stay in for extended periods of time. The kitchen might be a great place, but remember to put the kit away from direct sunlight. And when it's time to harvest, cut the mushroom caps off with a knife or scissors, or twist off the caps with your hands. Harvest just before the caps flatten out, and before they become soft or soggy, as shown on North Spore's website photos. And unless you're planning to make a tincture or powder, don't bother with the stems, as they are very tough and too fibrous to eat. After harvesting, you could put the mushrooms in a paper bag and store them in a refrigerator up to a week. Or you can dry them to enjoy much later, like what we did with other mushrooms we grew at home. Be sure to store them properly for extended shelf life. Alright, let me show you how Mommy O cooked these mushrooms in a very simple yet yummy way. I'm gonna stir fry mushrooms and garlics with a little of olive oil and then later marinate it with a little bit of sesame oil and soy sauce. Okay. Right, mommy O is slicing the mushrooms. Cut some garlic. By the way, we're cooking only a portion of the shiitake right now. The rest are in the fridge. Mommy was putting a tablespoon of sesame oil. Sorry, sauce. Soy sauce. Oh, the sound. Ooh, it smells so good. Done. All right, onto the plating. That was co all cooked up within minutes. <laughs> Very fast. Mommy O is cutting up some homegrown scallion and shake on some sesame seeds. Mmm, -mm. let's dig in. Wow, it's <laughs> so good. I gotta go work out, but after I come back, this is gonna be part of my later evening snack. I will try hard not to eat all. So savory. Just got back from working out, and the big mushrooms, Mom Mio, cooked it with beef. It smells so good. Got a piece of beef and mushroom. Mm-hmm. 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 You 
might be wondering, can you grow more mushrooms after the first harvest? I am told that shiitake blocks don't usually grow in multiple flushes, but you can definitely try. Here are the options. Thanks again to North Spore for sponsoring this video. Use my code MISSMINA to get 10% off your order on North Spore's website. I put the link in the description box. They also provide educational resources on their YouTube channel and website, so check them out. Remember to subscribe and hit that notification bell. For food and travel in Korea, check out my other channel, Sweet and Tasty TV. Toodles, my noodles. As for the spent blocks, we're gonna give it to the chickens. Dance party!